So, uh, hello everyone. We, we are going to present our uh, current work on uh, how to increase citizen um, participation with, uh, um, with digital skill training. Um, it, it, it will be uh, kind of different from uh, the former presentation as we are speaking from the uh, state perspective. Uh, so, I am Oriane. Uh, is, uh, this is Pierre Louis. We are working for uh, Société Numérique, which is the French government task force on digital empowerment. We, uh, we work, uh, we, we were both uh, political activists formerly. We work on, um, on how to build um, a, a digital society which is uh, inclusive and uh, innovative. Um, the, the reason why this, the, the state government uh, is involving in this uh, this kind of uh, action is because of two two things. One, uh, we want uh, they they want to guarantee uh, so, so the social contract based on equality, which is a kind of a really important thing in France. And uh, second one, we we want to promote that uh, the uh, to promote economic growth. Uh, we we know that um, there are significant benefits from. Uh, of equipping people with uh, digital basic skills, such as, such as uh, productivity, uh, job, and uh, time and cost saving, uh, for example. So we uh, we work on uh, on providing people the the ability uh, to seize digital uh, opportunity. Uh, we we. We work on what we we have uh, we we used to to call the, uh, a value chain, which is uh, these three uh, three levels. Uh, the first one is digital inclusion. The second one is citizen empowerment, and then uh, the, the the smart territory or smart cities. And uh, through through each uh, level, civic tank can be used. Can be used. So uh, Pierre Louis is going to speak about one of our current uh, experiments. Uh, but just to to uh, to point out that we are used to um, to um, to try to support uh, the rise of digital commons and to try to scale up local initiative in that field. Thank you. Um, so we sorry. We, we try to work closely with uh, academics and with the uh, statistical department from the government in order to, to monitor the state of the digital uh, uh, divide in, uh, in France. So we have several numbers that uh, uh, struck us about the state of digital society in France and how it can affect the, the rise and the use of civic tech in the country, uh, su such as the, the fact of 20% 20, 20 of the French people who have, ac who have access to the internet uh, do you know philotis uh, to to use it uh, daily and uh, to exploit all the opportunities but 40 percent of uh, french citizens are afraid to to do uh, just administrative uh, uh, procedures and uh, the, the, the confidence placed in, uh, in in the internet is eroding in france for the past three years and uh, moreover uh, what uh, what was uh, studied in a, in a big uh, longitudinal, longitudinal study we, we are financing uh, uh, with, uh, with several universities that 91% uh, of the, the uh, persons surveyed, uh, which were supposed to be representative of the, the, the world population, uh, thought that internet was not uh, an impactful uh, political tool. It's good to get information, it's good to debate, but there is no impact linked uh, to uh, to it. So why why uh, yeah we can say yeah <laughs> why why do we want to to, to improve uh, digital skills? In the end, it's to empower the citizens. For the French government, it is as much important to help citizens acquire digital skills for job mobility, for instance, as it is for improving their civic uh, engagement. So train, training people to acquire digital tools. Uh, can help them to uh, to use uh, civic tech tools to uh, enable them to, to voice their opinion and to, to become uh, uh, data uh, uh, literate. And this feeling was reinforced by our uh, work on the field because we, we ran uh, several 
um, online debates, both uh, on the nationwide, na nationwide uh, level and on the uh, local uh, level, uh, whether it was for the government or whether it was when, when uh, we both worked for, for local uh, governments uh, before. And we, we think that without digital inclusion, uh, civic tech e is not um, uh, an impactful and a uh, mean and an empowerment uh, tool for, for uh, the citizen. And every campaign we, we run, an online debate, the only one we were successful was the one when we had a huge field support. When uh, we had uh, uh, f field headquarters, where we had uh, NGOs, when we had community centers, when we had uh, public libraries, where people were uh, training citizens, where people uh, were helping them to, to use the tool, when, uh, we, or when we had uh, uh, points for, for collecting, uh, writing uh, contributions or, and, uh, and so on, and we, we had volunteers to, to transcribe them on the digital uh, uh, platform. And uh, so we, we needed to, to find uh, a tool in order to facilitate the deployment of such help on the ground for civic tech. And a tool in order to provide funding to the trainers, to the civil servants who were helping the citizens, and uh, a tool that was a solution that was easy enough and uh, with multi points of entry, of entry to be used by the civil society, by the government, by local governments. So basically, we needed a, a one size fits all solution to teach digital skills. So. We are going to, to present you um, an experiment that was at first designed for global digital skill improvement, but we think there might uh, be, there will be, uh, a lot of external positivities for the civic tech field. It's a, a voucher, it's not a very new idea, but it's a voucher designed uh, to, that a citizen can give to a training center to, uh, to pay a training a lesson. So it was uh, designed by uh, a not-for-profit not cooperative from, from Bordeaux, one of our partners, and we are working on scaling, scaling it up uh, at the, the national level. Because what we have, we have a, a lot of different skills to train uh, for, 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 for coding, for jobs, for civic tech use, for, for data. We had a, a lot of public and private centers to do that. We have Fab Labs, we have a Makerspace, we have public libraries, we have public internet points, we have startups, and we have a, a lot of uh, people, uh, organizations willing to pay for that. We have the government, we have the local governments, we have healthcare providers, we have uh, foundations, we have a civic tech uh, platform. So, so we design this, this, uh, this, uh, this process when uh, where we have a platform, when uh, we can monitor the orders of the voucher, where we can um, have a map of all the eligible centers, when we have uh, all the services uh, one must offer in order to become eligible to the program. And, and we have a screensaver. <laughs> and <laughs> and so, so we, we, we have, the, the, we have the, the single point of entry uh, where uh, where the providers ca can order the, um, the vouchers and, and they can uh, uh, as well uh, define their future use. You, you can, we, we are going to buy you uh, one million vouchers, but you can use only it for data literacy and so on. And you can have multiple play, uh, payers. So it's, it's not the central government who, who is uh, going to choose, who is going to be trained and who is going to, to have these vouchers. Then uh, whoever paid for these vouchers he is going to receive it, and he can uh, and he can uh, uh, pay with it uh, for courses in one of the training centers, and he can log on the platform and get uh, and get paid for. And um, and so this is the, the, the view of the, of the platform we are currently experimenting. It uh, will be open source. It will be governed as a as a, as a common because. Uh, it will be run by a not-for-profit cooperative, which was uh, co-funded uh, by the state, by the state, but uh, we are a minority stakeholder in it. 
and we are going to to get around the table all the local governments, the not for, the not for profit organization working on digital skills, and and so on. And we 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 will have this this platform where we can uh, monitor all the the places, the the vouchers that have been emitted, whether they've been used, what they have been used for. Uh, the, the current uh, services offered and who is using them. And uh, we are even going a bit further by uh, gamif gamifying the process because you, you're going to earn badges when you, you get uh, uh, a training. It's not, it's a bit of a pre preview because it's not still official in France, but you can have a, a personal uh, skill. Uh, uh, skill profile when 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 you when one can follow his progress uh, with uh, digital skill acquired and we are going to work with other certification uh, agencies to to work on that but it's uh, it's it's not yet implemented <laughs> <laughs> it, it it won't get out of Twitter so I don't have so um, we the, the platform is running and we run a first experimentation uh, first experiment sorry. Uh, in the past uh, um, uh, spring, uh, where we, we worked not with a civic tech uh, solution, because we had to start easy, but uh, with uh, <coughs> the tax department from uh, our colleagues from the Ministry for the Finances. Because next year in France, it will be mandatory to file your tax uh, returns online, and this year it is still uh, permitted to, to file it uh, both in the tax centers and uh, or by mail or online. So we partner up with, uh, with uh, four tax centers in four cities where the civil servants uh, were giving uh, vouchers to the, to the citizen in order to, to, uh, to direct them to uh, six uh, training centers. So it was in uh, East of France, West of France, basically, and in the island of uh, La Réunion, which is near Madagascar, in an in overseas territory. And uh, we choose uh, the different cities for, according to uh, several criteria, what, were, what we discussed with the tax department, uh, that was the lo low-income uh, cities, where a lot of uh, households were tax exempt, but you still have to, to file, and uh, where uh, very few citizens uh, were uh, filing the tax return online, online, and we, we had uh, some some other cities that were that that were in the in the, in the nationwide uh, bullpark. So. So we, we, we had, a, like in, in La Réunion, we had only 38% of, of households who were filing their, their, their tax uh, returns online. And that's uh, where we, we focused uh, the, the, the distribution of, of vouchers as long as in the, in the other, in the other uh, cities. And it was a, a very interesting experiment because the, it was a small scale experiment. And, but we could monitor very closely all the things we were, were going. And for instance, it was very interesting to see how the, the civil servants worked with the digital trainers in, under, in, in order to, to balance what was relevant to the, 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 the tax learning and the digital learning. And it was a, a major a concern for the unions who basically uh, were afraid that we were... Um, Stepping on their on, on their on their toes, but it's uh, I think it will be one of the challenges of the civic tech is that and, and the online platforms and online debating is that to to mitigate the relationship with which is the the use of a tool and the way you're going to express your opinion and uh, it was interesting to see how we can work with digital centers we are we are not trained for either tax returns or uh, Political discussions, or, um, or, um, or um, I don't know, uh, uh, data literacy, and so on. So we we will have to to build partnerships between uh, activists and uh, trainers, or perhaps it will be both, or civil servants and trainers, depending on who is going to pay for for the vouchers. Uh, we learned that there was a significant significant gender gap as well. We are still uh, assessing uh, the, the source of it, whether it's. Uh, 
it's not necessarily linked to the to the, the fact it's a digital procedure. Perhaps it's also regarding uh, also the the balance of the of the wor household work and the and the f file return. But it's uh, it, it was striking. The turnout was lower than expected. Uh, so we we uh, we have to 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 think closely of the channel of distribution. And it was state sponsored. It was for the f for the tax returns. So it might be difficult to to use it with uh, for for participatory democracy and so on. So we, we we had to be ingenious in the way we're going to to di distribute it, even if there was a. Uh, a huge red radio campaign on, on local airways uh, Reddit, and uh, only 27% use all the vouchers because each citizen were given five vouchers. We we on, we always give uh, 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 several several vouchers, and they all use some vouchers to acquire the, the skill they needed, but they, they did not use all. And when uh, a public uh, entity is going to buy the voucher. For citizens, the idea is that we give them uh, enough vouchers to do what we want them to, to learn. Like you have five vouchers for for tax returns, but only four are needed to learn the skills required for tax return. And the idea is that they always have extra vouchers to learn something else. Whether it's oh, you're going to to file your tax, but you can uh, use uh, you can learn how to do Photoshop or use this open data platform and so on. So we want to to have incentives and to to get them uh, further, and that's what that's uh, what uh, was uh, really successful in the experiment, uh, because only 12% of the citizens who came to the centers they were aware that there was uh, learning centers uh, next uh, next to their neighborhood. So they all discovered discovered a new way to gain uh, digital skills and to learn uh, things uh, re regarding to this field. Uh, 30, uh, Thirty-five percent of them used one of the vouchers to learn something else, and fifty-five percent of of them uh, expressed the, the will to to learn new skill. So uh, we think it's a, it's very uh, virtuous way to 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 get the citizens to to a, a, to a learning path and uh, the, the, the and the for us the, the most striking result that uh, uh, two thirds of them uh, felt uh, uh, autonomous after uh, after the, the, the at the end of the experiment and were able to to be uh, <laughs> to be uh, to be autonomous to to do uh, the, the the task, the, the experiment what was uh, de designed for. So it, it is. Uh, they are very encouraging results, and we, we are, and we have a lot of uh, civic tech stakeholders in the cooperative who is going to run the experiment, and we are eager to, to work with them. Some of them are, are here to, today, and we we are eager to, to test the, the voucher later. And uh, this is it. We we are open to, to to any questions. You can reach us by email or by Twitter. Or, and uh, the slides are available, and uh, we, you will find uh, all the, 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 the platform and everything on the, on the GitHub uh, later. And we will have some w translation work to do, but uh, it, we, we, <laughs> we hope to achieve it. Thank you very much. Cool. That's fantastic. We've heard so many different kind of angles on how we can improve civic tech projects here, and there's, yeah, every, you know, uh, I really feel like there's so much work to do when I get back to Sydney. Um, we've got about five minutes for questions. Um, so let's have some questions. Start down here. I mean, maybe if all the, the people who presented would kind of be around here. Thank you for your presentations. Uh, it's been great to me learning about these amazing projects. And I understand that these projects are being implemented in countries where democracy already exists. Do you know any experience or advice, or do you know any initiatives um, that is designed for closed society like Vietnam, where democracy doesn't exist, but the internet and smartphone is very, very popular? And especially for Hong Kong, I, I want to ask the Hong Kong team that democracy in Hong Kong is going backward and getting closer and closer to the situations in China and Vietnam. Do, what is your vision where? Um, one day that Hong Kong will be just like Vietnam, and what is your vision? What is, um, how to get people participate in um, 
politic, uh, politics using uh, civic touch. Thank you very much. So thank you for your question. Uh, it is true that in Hong Kong, democracy is um, in a decrease because the government um, is working very hard to crack down any civic uh, uh, activities. Um, if you have heard recently Joshua Wong, Wong the face of um, the Occupy movement or Umbrella movement, he's in jail right now. He's going to spend his 21st uh, birthday there. Um, and um, uh, a lot of the other leaders are either in jail or they will be uh, charged later, including um, the mentor of our project, uh, Professor Benny Dai. So um, what we do is basically, um, what we do is not very different from other civic society. Um, it, it's just that, uh, just as uh, Firo had uh, mentioned before, the um, opposition has uh, employed many, many different tactics to, to attack us or to diminish us. So uh, we're always uh, on the look for uh, new ways of um, being influenced or cracked, do uh, cracked down. Um, for example, the first time we ran the election, we kind of like employ a su surprise tactic. So we were really in a low profile about our technology, our process and stuff like that. It was um, only on the last days of the elections, uh, before the election, we released um, the app and, um, and then we help people uh, rehearse how to use the apps. Um, that helped um, the first time because the government didn't understand our tactic at the time. Um, but the, the it didn't help the second time because they were, they came very prepared, and um, you know as you can see in 2014 the government, uh, or the pro government organizations used um, the DDoS attack, a very brute force attack. But this time they used a smear campaign, which was really really um, successful because um, what we have found is that people. Um, the general public, they don't understand technology very well, and there's a fear about privacy issue and technology. When they hear about something that they don't understand, it's more complex than, than they could uh, comprehend, they tend to just stay very conservative. So um, I guess our lesson learned was um, always think about how do you uh, go one more step, um, do something that the government didn't expect. Um, and the other way is basically um, always communicate with your uh, user base um, so that they're uh, on top of your strategy, your technology and stuff like that to increase participation. I, I was pretty amazed by uh, the, the gaming tactics that they have uh, to actually lure uh, the opposition when they try to attack us. You told me one story yesterday. So they have this telegram bot where they do deliberation and they have like the opposition coming trolling, they identify them and they pull all them together in the same chat room and they discover it at the end of the debate or uh, when we were at OGP. Yeah. Uh, the first use of Telegram we thought was like uh, making uh, uh, several chatbots uh, uh, using like games uh, in order to vote because the idea was not to do a civil referendum at the time but nominating candidates but just saying if you are against or for a candidate, and we were thinking of a game to just like trash uh, the the candidate, saying if you are against him, you you throw a tomato. If you and doing games, so they can't really know which one to attack. So it's really uh, what I, I did. I discovered that with them is like you have to uh, enhance participation and also uh, have a, a really uh, strategical uh, way of approaching. Uh, the, 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 the whole thing because you know you're going to be attacked by the opposition so it has to be inside your, your plan. Yep. This matter as well because I think it's a very interesting issue and just let me to advertise tomorrow roundtable we'll discuss about <laughs> civic tech and uh, its uh, relationship with the struggling democracy in Asia. But I just want to say that uh, in Taiwan it's interesting to notice uh, Cup Zero established in 2012 but it's not that famous. It's become famous since 2014, the Sunflower Movement. So in Asia you find that civic tech community grown faster after some kind of crisis rather than in a time without crisis. So I, I would rather to think uh, civic tech is not 
all about how to collaborate with government. Sometimes in a situation, maybe in Asia, uh, the democracy is young, or so maybe there's no uh, real democracy at all. Civitech can still collaborate with uh, NGOs, activists, to do a different kind of activities. So I think there's a potential uh, potentialities of Civitech, not only with government. I think uh, we're just, uh, this will be a quick one because then we have lunch, but yeah. yeah hopefully. Um, I just have a question, possibly for the, sp the, the first presentation, but maybe someone else can speak to it. Um, citizen participation, civic engagement, all that sort of stuff, um, you know, requires a bunch of ingredients like even the, the digital literacy and all the tools, etc. But there's the social contract between government and citizens. Um, and there's no point in citizens engaging if there's no trust that government is going to be responding. Um, I've seen it firsthand. I think you guys have seen a similar thing. Um, has, was there any challenge uh, on your side with regards to B Taiwan and all those tools? Or was it just that there's such a willing government to, to participate that actually there was a two-way communication? Uh, so I think that's maybe one. Cool. Fee, do you want to? Okay. So basically, all these tools actually come up after uh, 2014. So it's after the Sunflower Movement. So um, we have. Oh no! I, I know that our report is really huge. So I'm going to make this quick. So actually, what happened is that after uh, Sunflower Movement, there is um, awareness of from the citizen about transparency and also uh, how to uh, citizen wants to engage more about policy making, and they approach put a lot of pressure to the government. So the outbreak of the movement actually lead to that uh, to the uh, government have to respond to this kind of um, critics. So actually, they came up with V Taiwan after that movement. So this is the uh, why the government are willing to respond. But I have to say that some uh, uh, government officials that uh, on the certain positions they are willing to open up and they want to respond to the to critics and citizens' opinions. But some they are like more like um, they try to be. Like they try to pretend openness, but they are not really doing it. And we also discussed that a lot on, in our report. And uh, but I think that uh, unless on, um, on the scale of these toys, uh, tools, you can see that um, this after 2015, the government trying to be more responsive. But and even though we have this like I voting, we have that join platform, we have V Taiwan. Like in our cases, we don't think that's enough. We think that. Even though we have voting system, we have like you can propose, but there's only like uh, we propose something and government feedback. There's no collaborative after that, and there's no actually co collaborating and policy making and planning as well. So we, that's not enough. Uh, there's also contrast that we are tr still trying to push um, the government to do more. And now the crisis we have now in 2017 is that after the election that happened last year, uh, actually um, the, the government, uh, well, the Sunflower Movement happened, uh, is being turned down. There is another new government. So this new government doesn't really have that pressure from the, they don't feel the pressure from the public anymore. So they don't have the motive, motive to, do, to be more transparent. So it's actually been more difficult to us than ever to push this transparency in the government now. Thank you. Well, that's all we have time for. Can we just give a big round of applause for our excellent panel and also our questions? Cool. Yeah.